Hey everybody, this is Ray Ogilvie from Hartsville, South Carolina. And this strange creature we're looking at here is a hammerhead worm. And they're very different from worms you may be used to seeing. Most of us are familiar with earthworms, which are in the annelid phylum. But hammerhead worms are in an entirely different phylum. They're members of the platyhelminth phylum. Platyhelminth is Greek for flatworm. Unlike annelids, flatworms lack a circulatory system. They rely totally on diffusion to get oxygen and nutrients to all the cells in their bodies. For this reason, their bodies have to be flat. Also, flatworms have a very different digestive system than annelids. In annelids, such as earthworms, there's a mouth on one end and an anus on the other end. And a long tube running through the body connecting them. Food enters the mouth and passes through the body and is digested along the way and is finally discharged through the anus. But in the flatworm, the mouth is located in the middle of its body. And this leads to a branching cavity inside the body. But there's no separate opening to dispose of the digested food. It's simply dumped back out of the mouth. Hammerhead worms feed on slugs, snails, insect larvae, and earthworms. They're able to track their prey using chemoreceptors located in their heads. Once they find their prey, they entangle it in a slimy secretion containing a neurotoxin. The neurotoxin and the slime immobilize the prey. The neurotoxin may give the hammerhead worm some protection against being preyed upon itself. Once its prey is immobilized, the hammerhead worm extends its pharynx. This is the part of its throat located just behind the mouth. It then secretes digestive enzymes onto its prey, which will dissolve its victim. The hammerhead worm then sucks up the liquefied remains of the poor creature into its digestive cavity. Hammerhead worms are such good predators that they're considered a threat to the earthworm population here in the United States. Hammerhead worms are not native to the U.S. They were likely introduced to the country through plant trade with southeastern Asia during the late 1800s. They can now be found all over the U.S. Thanks for watching.